Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. Today I'm going to talk about how to properly name your variables. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my website here and hit begin. And I'm going to go down here to my variable slash identifier naming tutorial. I'm going to pull this up here. Okay. So uh, in a previous tutorial, I briefly went over a little introduction to Java primitive variables. Now we're going to talk about all the rules that are associated for naming variables. Java, like any computer language, has naming conventions and rules for legal names of primitive variables. In future tutorials, you will learn things such as classes and interfaces, methods and constants. The names of classes, interfaces, methods, variables, and constants are collectively known as identifiers. In this tutorial, I will teach you the rules of valid names for your identifiers. Okay, so on the website, I've got this all printed out here, and we're just going to kind of go, go over some of this. We won't go in too in depth on, on all of it here, but if you want a more in depth view, just go to my website. So, rule number one uh, first character of the identifier. The first character of the identifier must begin with one of the following. And when I say identifier, you can use that as variable, you know, interchangeably there. So, must begin with one of the following. The letters A through Z, an underscore, or a currency symbol. Okay, so that's the first character of the identifier. Pretty simple. They cannot begin with numbers 0 through 9. Okay, now the second rule is that the remaining characters of the identifier can contain the numbers 0 through 9, otherwise everything else is the same. They can have A through Z, an underscore, or a currency symbol, and there is no limitation on the length of the identifier. Uh, Java keywords. Keywords basically are reserve words in the Java programming language. They have 50 of them, and you cannot use them for the names of your identifiers. They're all listed here. I'm not going to go over those. Um, Java, of course, is a case-sensitive language. So if you call an identifier, for example, all uppercase first name and another identifier first name with a camel casing, we'll get in that in a second, they will be two completely separate identifiers. They can hold completely separate values. They relate to each other in no, no way. Okay. Uh, now, while we're talking about the rules of naming, naming your identifiers or variables, we have to talk about name, naming convention. Uh, if you've never heard of it, camel case is the convention of writing compound words with no spaces and an initial uppercase letter for each word. You can see I've kind of run this together to kind of give you an example. Be a little creative there. Uh, using camel case is not specifically a Java rule, so you're not required to adhere it to it, adhere by it. Um, but however, it is a best practice and I highly recommend utilizing naming conventions listed below. Um, so some of the things that we talked about, you know, as far as classes, interfaces, methods, we haven't even gone into any of those. Uh, we talked about that earlier here. So I'm just going to go over the variable naming convention. If you uh, are interested, I also have the method, method class and constants naming convention. So basically the variable naming convention is the first letter of the identifier should begin with a lowercase letter and all the remaining words should begin with an uppercase letter. Here's some examples first name, last name, street number, my hair color. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started with some actual examples here. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, pull that off screen. We're going to go ahead and open up our command prompt by clicking down here on start and then search. Type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start and run and type in CMD. That'll open up our command prompt. We type in CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and the backslash will change this to the root. Type in CD space, or uh, you know what, we're going to type in MD space Java short for make directory Java. So if you don't have it, it'll go ahead and create it. I obviously do. Type in CD space Java, which is change directory to the Java folder. And we're going to type in make directory identifier. So, do it plural. And we're going to do CD identifiers. Um, now we're going to type in notepad identifiers .java. Okay. 
This will be the name of our Java source code file. Always ends in Java extension. We've gone over that in previous tutorials. Okay, rather than sit here and watch me type in a whole bunch of stuff, I'm just going to come over here to the website there and I'm just going to highlight all of this in this little section here. Control C or you can right click on it and right click on your it's like copy. I just hit Control C on that. I'm going to go ahead and move that off screen there. Come over here. I hit Control V to paste. And so basically we've got our multi-line comment up here. Got the name of our class, our class definition here. Matches the name of our file here. Code block, our main entry point. Everything inside of the, the main entries opening and closing curly braces are going to be the code block for the main. And I've got, um, I've got several of what we call variable names, or now you know them as identifiers, okay? And I've just chosen the data type as int, the primitive data type as int for this tutorial, just, um, it was just easy, so. Um, the first, ver first identifier that we're going to create is 4G speed. So this is perfectly legal, follows all of the rules. Um, it all just has the letters A through Z in it, okay? The next one is not legal, and that because that's because it begins with a number, okay? The one after that, G4 speed, is legal because eh, only the first character can cannot be a number in this particular case. So the second character being a number is perfectly legal, okay? The next one, not legal, because it begins with a prohibited character. If you go back to... Um, Back to my website there, you can see, and later on you'll see, you know, that's basically the first character, the identifier must begin with one of these characters. So, pound is not even allowed in there, right? Um, underscore high score, that's perfect. Dollar sign high score, that's allowed, based on these rules here. Um, high ampersand score is not legal because it contains a prohibited character. You see, after the first character, the identifier contained the following, the number zero, through nine, A through Z, an underscore or a currency character. You throw anything else in there, not legal. Uh, the next one, int go to. It's not legal. Go to is a Java keyword. Now I know we didn't go over all the 50 keywords. You can review that on, um, on your own time there, but that's the reason why you can't do that. This is perfectly legal. We got a dollar sign with a couple underscores and another dollar sign. And here we have an underscore with the number and another dollar sign and underscore. So. Um, let's go ahead and save this file here. Let's pop back to our command prompt, type in Java C, identifiers.java. We're going to get a whole bunch of errors because we have got all this stuff here. So the, um, the error is not a statement, right? And another error expected, right? It just throws up all this, this stuff here. You know, don't be fooled by these single line comments. It's just spitting these out. The compiler did not, did not put these in. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to go ahead and comment out these lines that are not legal. Okay, we'll go ahead and save this. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll clear our screen off. Type in Java C. Returns us back to the, the prompt there so we know that it compiled okay. We're going to go ahead and run it. And we got the exact output that we wanted to. So I'm just going to say this again, just you know, reiterate the rules here. The, the most critical rules are the first character of the identifier must begin with one of the following, the letters A through Z, an underscore, or a currency character. After the first character, in other words, the second character on, the identifier contain, can contain any of the following. The numbers 0 through 9, the letters A through Z, an underscore, or a currency symbol. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of this, and I'd just like to, you know, reiterate to please take some time to study the naming rules and conventions for your identifiers. They are fundamental key to writing good quality Java code. Trust me, your coworkers will appreciate it, and with practice and time, it will become second nature. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.